One of my favorite stories that Josh Kalis talks about, him going to Barcelona and going to Sans and asking permission with respect from the locals to skate that spot. That awareness of where you are and who you're skating with and how you should skate when you're at a certain spot. It's places like this that really sort of wrote our code of conduct for how you act at someone else's skate spot. It's a sort of shared cultural understanding that like you should skate this in a certain way that make this spot so significant. So we're standing here at Pier 7, which is one of the oldest piers in San Francisco. Uh, originally built in 1901, it was a passenger and cargo pier. And when you look at old photos, you'll see that it was just pier after pier after pier after pier along the waterfront. After a fire in the 1930s, the whole thing was demolished and it was turned into a parking lot. That parking lot was compromised after the 1989 earthquake and then the whole thing was destroyed. And while it looks like we're standing in this like 19th century pier with these Victorian street lights and brass and copper banisters, this whole thing is a disnified historicist fabrication. This is where industry happened. This is where sketchiness happened. But in a way, we actually have the old timiness, manufactured and artificial or not, to thank for the unique qualities of Pier 7 as a skate spot. The Skate Spot Pier 7 is actually this juncture between the ultra-minimalist Tetris-like forms of the Embarcadero ribbon or the Bay Blocks and this kind of weird historicist pier where I believe it was the Port Authority of San Francisco itself designed these concrete blocks with these little Victorian lips and molding and this weird kind of transition between the Bay Blocks and the Victorian looking pier. People were already starting to look at skating these things in 1994 and 1995 when this gets built. And then the Port Authority of San Francisco actually took the time to put aluminum coping on some of these. They knew that skateboarders were gonna have to have some place to go. This is a new spot, new spot check. At one point they must have thought that like it would be okay for skateboarders to come here, which of course it was and it also wasn't. Welcome to San Francisco. You think to yourself, if you didn't skate, what would you like about this spot? Like why on earth did they build these nearly perfect height and length manual pads that are like three in a row where you can skate like a ledge, skate another ledge, maybe skate a third ledge, do a trick over one of the pads. But there is also these options of like skating this ledge from the side, skating up the two stairs. There's almost no other reason to have built this but for skateboarding. And in a way, it's like, if you think about how skateboarding was in 1995, like skating anything lower than a bench is basically unacceptable. And so it's kind of the perfect obstacle. You, you have to be precise, you have to be powerful, you have to know what you're doing on a skateboard. If you watch old videos, like the opening line in Rob Welsh's aesthetic part, he does a half cab crook here, no push, and then Nolly 180 switch crook on that ledge. You have to be hauling ass to do that. A lot of kids that grew up skating at Embarcadero, but that maybe never filmed full parts there, they really came into maturity at a spot like this. If you think about how skateboarding was going towards the late 90s, like a lot of these locals are filming their defining parts. You think of Stevie's part in the chocolate video. And what makes pier footage from that era stand out is that these dudes were able to make technical ledge skating look just as challenging and just as like amazing as rail skating. This is still the era where once you film something, no one else could do it. One of the only repeats I think is super funny is uh, Henry's powerful kickflip backside nose blunt and also the fact that his good friend Rob Welsh did the exact same thing, going the same direction, I think on the same ledge. That ethos of like not only doing something that no one else can do, but doing something that no one else should try to do after you is really key to why like Pier 7 is such an important skate spot and such a, an important component of our history and culture today. Both LeVar and Marcus basically wrote the textbook of how you would skate a spot like this. Full speed, full technical prowess. The shit that Marcus did over this pad alone scribed his name into Skateboarding's Hall of Fame. Like that is undeniable.
But also one of the most amazing things is like, you have people like Henry who filmed groundbreaking parts at Embarcadero and then we're able to take that same level of intensity and film crazy shit here. Think of that fakey heel flip, fakey manual up this ledge, like that's insane. By the early aughts, most of these ledges have been capped. They've been, even gone as far as to take out some of the original ledges that were along the ribbon. They've put these sort of X brace brackets along the manual pads. And then by the 2010s, the teens, they start adding these planks. Not only do they add these planks, they then, to make sure that you're not supposed to skate them, they then skate stop the skate stopper. Two years ago, like, despite the fact that nearly everything good at Pier 7 had already been done two decades before, someone took those planks off and rebondoed the holes left by those old skate stoppers. And you can just look at them now and they just look beat to hell. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous, but it's also sort of like seeing your first big high school crush and you see them 25 years later, they're middle aged, they've got wrinkles, but you still connect to that person, you still love them. Pier 7 is the first love. You're always gonna do whatever you can to skate it and to pay tribute to it. That's why people skate it today. The dudes that skated this spot carved out a new way of skating this spot that was both difficult, excellent, and really intimidating. You had to like, one, learn how to stay out of people's way, two, learn how to skate these ledges properly, and three, like show respect to the people that had already pioneered skating here. You don't have to agree with me that that's important, but modern skateboarding, contemporary skateboarding, looks the way that it does because of how people skated and learned how to act around this skate spot. We skate the way that we skate because of the people that skated this spot. You watch a fucking Pier 7 in San Francisco, homeboy. <laughs> Shit, that's what you watching.